Back in November of last year, the National Institutes of Health welcomed its 17th director, Monica Bertagnoli. Operating the government's health research wing in a post-pandemic environment comes with a set of different challenges than what her predecessors dealt with. I recently got the chance to speak with her about that and what she's learned so far just six months on the job. You've been on the job now for just over seven months or so, or coming up on the seventh month anniversary. Any observations so far and or lessons learned right off the bat just in these first few months? Well, I think there's two things that I can say. First of all, what has been wonderful is just the camaraderie and willingness across all the different 27 institutes and centers of the NIH who all have their own amazing leaders of me in this position, seeing such camaraderie and willingness to work together and track record of working together across all those different leaders. That's, I think, truly exceptional and illustrates a great commitment toward really doing whatever it takes to improve health for people. I had heard <laughs> before I arrived in this position that, you know, watch out for silos, watch out for, and I'm, I'm really pleased to say that while we still have silos and we have a tremendous willingness from everyone to eliminate those and work together as never before, which has been really wonderful. The other thing I will say that is a surprise to me, but a really wonderful one, is the willingness of the other heads of agencies across HHS to also work together. The understanding that, you know, NIH represents the main research arm of the effort, but we have so much to gain from working with partners across all of HHS, and we're now getting ready to do some, I think, really transformative work together, and that's also been great. Yeah, coming from the National Cancer Institute, were there any assumptions that you had about the role that maybe turned out to not be true or, you know, vice versa? Was there something that you didn't quite see? You know, you were from a pretty high view before, but now you're even higher view about the agency itself. I think that's the main one I've already described, you know, at NCI. And I was only there for a year. <laughs> I was just barely getting my feet wet. You know, at NCI, I was intensely focused on that institute itself and all of its workings and really trying to optimize all the functions of NCI and really hadn't yet lifted my head to think what was possible across the broader scope of NIH. So I think that's the major difference. The director really needs to think about every corner of NIH and the relationship of NIH to all of the other external parties. So it is a completely different job, frankly. Yeah, let's get into the role of NIH. You had mentioned that you're the research effort of the HHS mission, but do you see an evolving role of the National Institute of Health, especially in, let's say, at a post-COVID world? We always have an evolving role. Okay, we have two aspects to what we do. First, we understand that at NIH, our work has to encompass the research laboratory, it has to encompass the clinic, and it cannot stop at the door to the doctor's office. It also has to fully encompass all of the communities that we serve. And those communities include you know, rural sites in America, they include busy metropolitan areas, and they also include the rest of the world where lessons in health are critical. And so we constantly have to maintain an infrastructure that can serve that really, really broad environment. And then also as COVID illustrated, be able when needed to be in reactive mode because we can't always anticipate what new threats are going to arise. And I'll say that evolving, all of biomedical research evolves constantly, but our focus is on maintaining that infrastructure so that we make progress all the time, so that we also are ready to jump in whenever we need to react to a new threat. Can we get a, a little specific there? What changes have you seen across the agency and maybe and you know just the national health strategy overall uh, coming out of you know still still being able to smell the fires of the COVID pandemic? Well, I'll just raise a couple because there are so many. But mm -hmm. let me give you the ones that I think are the highlights. Number one, the fragility of so many communities within the United States in particular, the disproportional impact on some communities that are experiencing health disparities of that virus. That one just 
reminds us every single day that we have to overcome those disparities. So it highlighted that as never before. Again, something that we had been targeting, but it just made it so much more real to everyone to see how hard hit those communities were. Number two, the trust issue that was uncovered by the COVID-19 pandemic. Someone will say that, you know, the current environment created this trust issue. You know, I think the trust issue must have been there even before, and perhaps the COVID pandemic really highlighted it. I think this has taught us in the biomedical research community that we can't just put out our knowledge, put out what we've learned and expect everyone just to take it in and act upon it. We have to earn the trust of communities that lack it. And this, again, drives us to be better listeners and better partners to communities of need out there who are really are experiencing disproportionate effects to health challenges, and I think has redoubled our dedication to listening to people and delivering what they need, not just assuming that our research is going to speak for itself. And that is taking us in a new direction that I think is very powerful. You know, as the research wing of the government's health program, it almost seemed as if during the pandemic, just the process of health research just came under intense scrutiny. You know, everybody was learning kind of on the go. Has NIH taken any steps towards maybe improving that trust or in the actual process itself and saying, hey, you know, we're we're researching here. We're not necessarily going to have all the right answers right away. Um, it Was that sort of the seed of, of some of the issues that you saw? Um, No, I take that in a little bit different direction and say that research means that people out there, all the people in the communities we serve have to be part of the answers, right? You know, we can't produce answers that say, here's what you need to do to stay healthy, unless we have people out there who are our partners in being able to deliver those answers. That's number one. And then number two And this is the one that I think I have taken most to heart, is that the people who were in communities of disparity, the people who have had the least trust in the results of research, were the ones who were left out of research. So if we're going to get those answers, we have to convince people that everyone needs to be part of helping us find those answers. Yeah, and on the note of inclusivity, you are the second woman to ever run the NIH. You know, what can you s- speak about the rise in female leadership that you're seeing, particularly in the medical field? Yeah, I think it's really exciting. And I think it is the result of decades, decades of sustained progress in eliminating unconscious bias and ensuring that the best minds. And those with the best passion are able to assume leadership jobs and that there shouldn't be kind of these inappropriate, let's say, roadblocks to people getting there. And uh, I think we're seeing that for women. We're seeing that for many other aspects of our communities. You hear us talk a lot about also promoting inclusion of various other perspectives in biomedical research and in leadership. And I think the need, again, to get deeply into the communities we serve are another aspect of that. Not only am I a woman, I'm somebody who grew up in a very remote rural community. And that's just another segment of our society example of someone whose voice I think we need if we're going to conquer problems for everybody. Gotcha. And can you speak to any particular advancements so far that you are proud of, you know, or, you know, I know you've only been at it for seven months, so the list of accomplishments <laughs> may not be uh, as long as as one might hope or anything that you are working towards that you are really trying to take an interest in and have a uh, driver's seat role in? So one of them is it comes from being a doctor in a clinic, also being a researcher, kind of a spectrum of research, but also being a doctor in a clinic and sitting there thinking, you know, I know what kind of data and data quality I need if I'm going to publish a new manuscript. And I also sat in clinic and realized, look at the data quality that I'm using to make life altering decisions with my patients day in and day out. And let me tell you, the data quality 
doctors and patients are using in the clinic is not where we would like it to be.